Skelet Technologies is a startup founded in 2019 in Estonia that produces ultracapacitors with some of the best technology available in the market. Their ultracapacitors allow their clients to save energy, reducing their fuel bill by 30%. Ultracapacitors are electronic devices that are similar to batteries in the sense that they store energy, although the way they store energy is different. Ultracapacitors are not able to save as much energy during as much time as batteries. However, they allow for quicker charge and discharge. Thanks to that, they can be extremely useful in a lot of industries and applications, such as renewable energy production and electric grids, helping to protect and stabilize power grids by regulating voltage and frequency or being used in short-term UPS. In the automotive industry, for example, by helping to increase range and lifetime of electric vehicles when being combined with batteries. And heavy transportation, by recovering braking energy to use it in acceleration. Skeleton Technologies differentiates itself from its competitors by investing a lot in R&D and producing its own synthetic raw material which enables it to have a big advantage in terms of cost and performance, such as having 50% more energy and 4 times higher power density than other ultracapacitors on the market. One of the facts is that we kind of control the entire value chain, so we have our own raw material production, uh, we manufacture the cells, we manufacture modules and full systems, so we control basically the entire chain from the start until the the end customer or perhaps a reseller or distributor or an integrator so that is something that other ultra manufacturers globally do not have we have our own uh, synthetic raw material so the carbon we use uh, we manufacture ourselves our competitors mostly used uh, charred coconuts uh, as an organic carbon in their uh, in their products so uh, there, there are a few different things. We have, I think, 11 patent families uh, covering everything from the production processes to the synthesis processes and so forth. So it's a lot of uh, R&D, a lot of technology. The company was founded in Tartu, the second biggest city of Estonia, which is often considered to be the intellectual capital of the country, as it's home to the country's biggest university, the University of Tartu. The company was originated from a research project on curved graphene and its applications. The raw material that we call curved graphene, this is uh, based on a research done by scientists in Tartu University in Estonia. Um, our founding team, uh, two of the founders were uh, in this scientist group that developed the, the material. And there actually are a number of different applications that it could have been used in. But the founding team, they looked at potential applications that might have the biggest impact in 10 or 20 years. And uh, basically supercapacitors, ultracapacitors are what they, what they ended up with. So energy storage, especially with hybridization and electrification, it can have a massive impact globally. Since its foundation, the company has grown to around 125 employees and expanded its production facilities near Dresden, Germany in 2017 in order to be closer to its customers and keep their production in Europe. Our production facility is there close to Dresden actually, so again multiple reasons, but one of them is that uh, for example the automotive market is largely there, so our customers are largely there, all, all of the large uh, European companies in basically whatever sector are pretty close by compared to having them visit Estonia and do uh, you know factory visits in Estonia. Secondly, there was existing infrastructure because of the photovoltaic industry kind of um, rise and doom in, in the region. So there were existing infrastructure, existing skilled personnel that we could hire at location. And we also wanted to kind of uh, keep our production in Europe and highlight the opportunity for Europe in, in electrification and, and, and in manufacturing. In order to grow, there was a need to attract talent. Skeleton Technologies was also not looking for any talent, but for world-class talent. This was not an easy task at the beginning, but it became easier as the company grew and gained recognition. It's always been somewhat of a challenge, especially because we started in Estonia, 
the universities here, technical education is actually a very high level. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, great uh, technical people, technical talent in Estonia, both in, let's say, hardware R&D and software R&D and, and so forth, uh, manufacturing. Um, and maybe the, the biggest problem is that in the beginning we were not very well known, so it was hard to kind of get people firstly to get excited about the company and what we do and to find out about us in the first place. Now it's a lot easier because there's a lot of PR and uh, stories, especially in Estonia and Germany, the newspapers and news and internet and so forth. So people actually are starting to come to us and now it's much easier to, to find the talent and uh, we don't really have to do so much selling because they're already aware of us and what we are doing and what is the potential and so forth. While growing, there was also an active concern in setting the company's culture and finding people that would fit with its main core values, push boundaries, get it done, and use good judgment. This imply an atmosphere of trust, commitment, autonomy, and accountability. Uh, but building the culture, I think it takes, uh, I mean, you can let it grow organically and mm -hmm. see where it develops, but at Skeleton, the route we have chosen is to kind of really think what we want the company to be and the culture to be and the atmosphere to be and try to uh, try to really make it happen. So we, for example, have our internal core values, um, push boundaries, get it done and uh, use good judgment. Skeleton Technologies faced many challenges since its creation. It faced the difficulty of recruiting when it was smaller and managing the cultural difference in implementation in Germany. But perhaps the biggest challenge it faced was receiving investment at an early stage. Perhaps one of the biggest ones uh, is getting funding at an, at a relatively early stage before we had customers. So basically what customers are looking for is other reference customers or that we have production running and we can show that here's our production facility here. We manufacture this and this and this and this we will ship to you in eight weeks or three months or six months. Uh, but without having investor money, we couldn't do that. And on the other hand, the investors are asking, okay, show us customers, show us customer contracts. UC's final advice for us was to find a country that is startup friendly, where creating and developing a startup is facilitated, such as Estonia, and start to sell the product rather sooner than later and get a feedback from the clients in order to improve it. Good question. Um, kind of what I found is that it's every startup is in a very difficult position and very different position. So it's it's hard to give one advice to everyone. But if I would choose one, it's basically like start selling right away. Like n never wait for your product to be ready before you start selling. Like even if you don't have a product, even if you don't have a prototype, just start selling. Listen to their feedback and build based on that and make sure there's actually a market for what you are working on. And Skeleton Technologies is just getting started.